Welcome back. Next, we'll be taking a look at how to access tables. And as we mentioned when we spoke about the differences between them, this will look different for keyed versus unkeyed due to the fact that they have those different structures. So first of all, how can we access particular columns we're interested in? So we can use either backtick notation, so very similar to how we do dictionary retrieval, or dot notation. And this is an example of both. So in my table trade, I'm retrieving just the sim column and the same with this dot notation. Um, so that's just the name of the table separated with the dot and the name of the column. Um, so while we have both of these available to us, it's probably preferable to use um, the backtick notation, especially within a function. So if we have an example here of sum of trade dot size, so we're showing that's fine, we're able to use um, the dot notation here, but as soon as we put that inside a function and we are calling this x instead of trade and we pass trade outside the function, we get an evaluation error. Um, and yeah, Q does not like this, it's because it's looking for a global x. So avoid the dot notation within functions in particular um, and instead opt for the backtick notation. So you'll see here, instead of passing that as a dot, I'm using backtick. Everything else is exactly the same and that function is okay. So Q's happy with that. Okay, so have a go with this exercise. So extract columns from the code table and have a go with both ways. So then when we look at key tables, it gets a little bit um, more tricky. We can't simply use the back tick or dot notation here. We've seen that already when we looked at the differences between these tables. So let's create a new key table called trade key. And if I call key of trade on its own, it returns that keyed column or any keyed column. So if I had more than one here, we return them all as a table. And then once that's been retrieved, I'm able to index into that passing it the column. So there's an extra step here on a key table. Remember, I can't simply pass the name of the table and the column name I want back from a key table because this is expecting a key here as key tables are really a dictionary. Um, so if I want a keyed column back, I can do it this way. And if I want one of the columns that are in the value side of the, the key table, I can change the key here to value. So if I wanted size or price, I could do this and I could get those back as a list. So there is one other option available to us, which we don't go into detail here, um, but it's called exec and it's part of the QSQL notation. And the next module we have is entirely on querying using QSQL, which is the SQL like syntax language available for us to use to query tables. So we have something called the select from statement. So I can simply do select size from um, say trade key, and that will return the size just as a table. And if I wanted that to be a column, I could do that. So you'll see we have an, an extra option available to us here. And we'll go into these in more detail in the next module. Um, but we just want to show because when you compare all of these different ways to access a column from a key table, you'll see there is a performance impact. So we're just doing a timer here. Remember backslash TS returns the time and space used for a specific query. And then I'm going to run this 100,000 times. And I'm going to unkey the table. So if we say, right, we're not going to worry about this funky notation, we're just going to unkey our table first and then index like we know we're able to do with unkey tables. We're going to see how long that takes. Then we're going to use the dictionary notation. So getting um, the value, um, which is going to be our table returned first, and then we're able to use this um, same notation and then using this new QSQL exec format. Let's have a look at the difference. So you'll see this first one is the least performance. So while you might think it's the easiest conceptually to just change it to a unkey table and then access it, um, that wouldn't be advisable due to the performance implications of that. Um, the dictionary rotation here, while the size is slightly smaller, um, it's still not as fast as an exec. So exec is the most performant and probably the most common one you'll see. But it's good to be aware of them all in any case. Okay, so that's how we can access different columns from our table. 
Now, if we want to access rows, we can use indexing with unkeyed tables. So similar to list and dictionaries, we just pass the index we want returned. So if I have a table trade, JPM would be my zero with row, IBM my first and BP my second index. So if I pass just the index of one and I get this here row returned as a dictionary. Similarly to lists and dictionaries again, I can also use this take operator to get the subset of a row. So I can say three take this here list and that will give me the first three values. I can do the same with the trade table. So I'm saying two take trade gives me the first two. So I'm going to get in these first two rows and then doing minus two take trade would give me the last two instead of the first two here. Okay. Now with a key table, we can access the different rows using the key like we've seen before. So that's the same way we operate on dictionaries and we pass the key we're interested in. So I'm interested in JP Morgan and you'll see I only get the values returned. So I'm getting size and price returned, not the key itself. Um, and if you wanted to retrieve more than one key, um, you wouldn't be able to just pass this like here. You'll get a length error. What you need to do is actually pass this as a table. So when you have more than one key you want to look up on, pass it as a table here. So we're using table notation and we're just creating one column long table of this and we're naming that sim. So you put the name of the column you're looking up here in front and you'll see I get size and price returned. Now BP doesn't actually exist. So let's stick in a third one like KX and see what happens. And you'll see we get three rows returned and but we get only two populated as the, the ones that actually exist in the table. Okay, so have a go with this exercise. Update the trade key table to change the values for IBM. Um, so accessing it will be the same as we showed up here and then we'll be using the colon assignment to change those values. Okay, um, so let's put those two together. So if I wanna access a particular cell, I need to first filter on either the row and then the column or vice versa. So this works again differently when I've got an unkeyed versus a key table. So in the case of unkeyed, I've got two different options available to me. So if I just take this out and show both of these first. Um, so if we look at doing trade and then passing in two indexes, what do you think will happen? We end up getting those rows returned. So we're getting, that's the same as saying to take trade. We're getting the first two rows returned. Um, and if I pass trade with the column, I'm obviously getting just that column returned. So we can do both in the one comment. And this is called eliding. So I can either pass the rows first and then the column, or I can pass the column first and then the rows of interest. So you'll see I get the exact same thing returned for both. So in this example here, it's first checking out, okay, just give me the zero with the first row and then further filter on that to get me only the size column back. And then in this example here, it does it the other way around. And then with key tables, we only have one option. So we're first looking up any of the keys we want to retrieve. So that's our columns basically. And remember when we have multiple of those, we need to pass it like a table. And then secondly, we're further filtering on the column of interest. So you'll see in my second table, I was able to pick out the JP Morgan um, and IBM rows. And then I'm saying I only want size, which is 10 and 20 for those two returned. Okay, now if I wanted to change those values, it would look very similar in the unkey table. I'm accessing them with the same notation on the left and then I'm just using colon assignment here to update those to be something different. So you'll see here trade now, I am have changed those values to be 50 and 70. And then in the key table, similarly, I can use the colon assignment again. So the trickiest part of this is actually the left hand side here. So being able to access and find the rows and columns and cells of the table that you want to change. And this bit on the right hand side is the easy bit. So if this notation and what we've gone through is putting you off a little bit or a little bit scary, don't worry too much. In our next module, we're going to be looking at QSQL, like I mentioned, that's Q's inbuilt SQL-like query language, um, which makes it a lot easier to do things like access and update tables, especially if we're coming from um, a non-array programming language. Um, so it's important to learn the way we're showing here and you'll see others using it, especially when you're looking at other people's code perhaps. Um, but probably the majority of users and new users 
will use QSQL to access tables. So don't worry too much about this for now, but do spend some time getting comfortable with it um, and understanding these examples we have here. And then when you're happy, have a go with this exercise here. And then I shall see you in the next video.